Hey everyone, it's Raiga here from Raiga Tech, and welcome to the next episode in learning how to use Google Docs. So in this episode, we're going to be looking at bulleted lists, numbered lists, checklists, how to change the margin settings for power graphs and your bulleted lists and so on, and then also how we can insert images into our document and how we can format an image as well so that we can get the image and the text to work really nicely together. So we'll look at all these different things. Um, if you want to know the basics of um, using Google Docs, then have a look at my previous episodes that go through the very basics and build your way up. So um, you should have followed through the first two episodes and you should be um, opening your um, sample resume document. So open that up on your computer and then you can work this along with me. Right, so we've got all our headings and your paragraphs and things done. So now we want to create bulleted lists. So in, without using a proper bulleted list, most people kind of use like a star symbol and then a space and they put in um, the text for each bullet point. So we can do proper bulleted lists here. Now we don't need the star symbols anymore when we create the proper bulleted list. So we'll just delete those first. So do that on your one. Cool, and then we want to highlight all of them. So actually, before I do that, you can start start creating one without having the text already there. So you can just click the bullet point button. So I'll show you how to do that. So um, over here, you've got the bulleted list. You can click on the little arrow and it shows you the different types of bulleted list you want. So this one has the main bullet point as a filled in circle, a sub bullet point as an open circle, and then a sub bullet point of, a, of the sub bullet point is a square and you can see all the different kind of symbols that you can have. It's up to you what you want to use. Most people generally have the main bullet point as a circle so that's generally the one that you want to use but you can you know change them as you see fit. So let's choose that one. So you can see that it comes up with the first bullet point so we'll put bullet point one hit the enter key and then it creates the second bullet point for us. Cool. So if I want a sub bullet point, then um, we can click on bulleted list. Oh, so that turns it off. So we can click on, I think you go tab, is it? Yep, so you go tab, and then it creates a sub bullet point for that. So so this is a sub bullet point for point two. Again, if you get the tab key, then you get the sub bullet point for sub bullet point two. <laughs> so you can see how it works. And then if you just hit the backspace key, it starts to delete them and go back to how you had it. All right, so you can use the tab key to give you a sub bullet point depending on what you want. Okay, so that's how you can create them from scratch if we delete all of those. So we can see that we already have the text for our bullet points. So what you wanna do is highlight all of those and then click your bullet point list um, setting button and then it sets your bullet point for you. All right, so what I want you to do is for practice, go through and create bullet points for all the other points which have a star next to it. So those should all be bullet points. So why don't you go through and do that and then come back to the video. So you can see that the bullet points are indented in a little bit from the left hand edge of the document. So um, it's kind of a personal thing as to the design for that, it's up to you. If you want to change it, then you can highlight all of the text for that group of bullet points and you can see the margin setting up here. All right, so you see this little triangle, you can click on it and if you move it, it moves the bullet point. So the, the um, the little rectangle is the setting for where the bullet points occur and the little triangle is where the text starts from. So you can click and drag that across. So if you want the bullet points to appear right at the edge, we can do that. Cool. And if you want it to be a bit more indented, you can move it across a little bit depending on what you want. And you can see that there's a little blue line going down your document. So you can make your bullet points line up exactly 
to other things on the document. So we can make that line up exactly to where the text is. Sweet. Or if you click on the uh, rectangle and move that. So by clicking on the rectangle and moving that, that will increase or decrease the space in between the bullet point and the text. So if you want your bullet point to be quite close to the text, you can move it a lot closer um, or you can move it further away. All right, so we've seen how to do the bulleted list. So let's have a look at how we can do a numbered list. So if we just select our group of bullet points and then click on the numbered list, so you can see how it looks. So this is a nice way if you need to show things in a particular order and you want to number the steps or something, then we can use a numbered list here. Again, if you click the little arrow next to the numbered list button, you can choose how you want to do it. So again, it has the sub bullet points like the um, our previous one and you can show how you want to um, label them. So you could use letters instead of numbers or you could use um, Roman numerals as well. So there's different ways of numbering things. So just again a matter of preference how you actually want to do that. So for technical skills there's not really any order associated with that so that should really be a, just a proper bullet point. And you can also um, have a checklist as well. So maybe you want to print something off and allow people to tick off things um, on, a, on a tick off sheet or something. So we could have a, tick, a checklist here and then if you print it off you can give it to someone they can tick these off as appropriate. So that's how you can introduce a checklist um, into your document as well if you wanted. Sweet, so we've covered all the different styles of bullet points that you can have and so it kind of depends on what kind of document you are um, that you're going to be doing. So let's have a look at how we can um, insert a, an image into the document. <coughs> so we need to search for an image. So um, if you open up a new browser tab and go to Google and we want to search for Anakin Skywalker because that's the person who is who we are doing the only one in an Anakin. Did I have only one N in the... Oh, I've got two N's. So I needed to change that. So if you want to, you can change that to just one N if you wish. All right, so click on... Uh, so search for Anakin Skywalker on Google. Click on Images. So we can see all the different photos. Let's just choose the very first one. So you should see this one as the very first one. It probably doesn't matter which one you choose. So if you just click on that. And um, it comes up to this. So if you right-click on that image you can either save the image as a file or you can copy the image. So we're going to do both ways to show you how you can do it. So if you don't need to save it, you just want to put it directly into document, just go copy image and it will copy the image into your um, clipboard on your computer. And then if you go back to your document and um, let's say we're going to put the image after the name. So if you right click and go paste that will then post the image in for you. Now notice that's actually really huge. So we don't really want it that big. So we want to be able to format this. So if you if you select it, so you click on it, you notice you get the little handles that you can use for resizing the image. So we want to grab the, the right the bottom right one, just click on it and drag it, and you can see that it makes it smaller. So then we can get it to a manageable size. So Maybe about that size is a good size for an image in a resume or curriculum vitae. All right, so just play around with resizing the image and we'll look at positioning it in a minute. All right, so that's how you can copy the image from a web page and then paste it into your document. So let's do it the other way. So I'm, I'm going to delete it. So if you want to delete an image from your document, you just select it, press the delete key on your keyboard or the backspace key and that will delete that image for you so that's how you can get rid of it. So let's go back to uh, Google image search right click on that and then go save as and then we want to save it um, onto your computer somewhere so I want to go to my downloads folder and I'm going to save it in here so just click on that and it saves it. So maybe you want to do the same thing so you can practice um, uploading a document from a file so save that onto your computer so remember you go right click Go save as and then navigate to somewhere on your computer that you know where it's going to be saved to and then save that particular file. So if we go back to um, our document we want to insert that image. So we want to go to the insert menu here. Okay, So we can go insert image 
and we want to go upload from computer or you can go directly search the web and I guess it would come up with Google you can do it from your Google Drive folder if you um, have an image in your Google Drive folder or you can grab it from your photos or you can take a picture on your camera if you're editing this document on a device that has a camera cool and there's also a quick way of doing it which is this um, button here insert image so you can see that it comes up with the same options we had um, in the insert menu so upload from computer sweet so if you go to wherever you saved it so my downloads folder and if you can't see it then click on um, date modified and that way it'll sort it by the date and the, early, the the most recent one will be at the top so choose our image click open and it inserts it in and again we can resize it by just clicking and dragging so it's a practice um, having a go at inserting a document from your computer and make sure you know how to do that as well cool and the the other way you can also do it is if you um, go to your document on your computer and then double click on it to bring it up in some sort of image viewing thing uh, actually you probably need to do it in paint so if you right click on it and go um, edit that will open it in Microsoft Paint if you then just go Control A to select all go Control C to copy then if you close it then go and then go right click paste that will do the same thing okay so you can actually copy it from Microsoft Paint or some sort of painting package you have on your computer and you can copy and paste it in okay so there we go so you can move it around by um, putting so you can see the cursor there is just after the image you can change use the arrow keys to go back to the beginning of the image if you hit the enter key it moves it down sweet um, and you can obviously click on it and you can see you can drag it and you can see where the, the cursor line appears it's going to go after that so if I put it um, here you'll see that it puts it before the word objectives or if I move it to the end of this it puts it at the end of that particular line so basically this is being treated as just like a, a another character in the text but it's just a really big image so let's move it up there so maybe just drag have a go at dragging your one around and see what effect it has you can also move it in the middle of some text you can drop it in there which looks really weird uh, but that can be done as well so let's have a look at how we can format the image so if you click on your image you've got some format options down the bottom here and you have some more um, options here which we'll look at in a minute so this option here wrap text so what this does is it wraps text around the image okay so basically you can see now that if we move the image up so you can see that as you move it up you'll see a red line appears that's the top of your document you don't want to really go above that so that's the top of your document and as you move it to the left you'll see a line appear on the left hand side so that helps you align it to the top left of the document sweet so you can see uh, so we'll remove that line there the empty line so you can see now the text is the text is wrapping around that particular image or we could move it to the other side and put it over here let's make this line up nicely there we go and now it appears so that makes a bit more sense to have the picture on this side of your resume right so why don't you have a go at doing that on your document so remember the first thing you need to do is click on this button here called wrap text so that wraps it then you kind of move it around and see what effect it has and then move it into this position which is the top right of your document cool so that looks quite cool right uh, maybe it's a little bit too big because it's eating into this particular paragraph so if you just make it a bit smaller then you can see that it doesn't affect that and so we can move it back up to there alright so let's have a look at some of the other settings this is break text so basically um, it puts it between text so you can see the line appears here so it's going to go in between those two lines of text so that's what break text does this is behind text so now you can put it um, behind some text you can just see the text appear on the front of that image so that's what behind text does and this one here is in front of text so if you want it to be on front of text 
and so you won't be able to see the text behind it not too sure why you'd want to do that but sometimes if you have kind of like a uh, an image with some transparent background so that you can see the things behind it then you can do that as well so generally most people will use the wrap text so that the text will wrap around that particular image cool so let's have a look at some of these settings over here the margin settings for the image so at the moment it's set to um, one eighth of an inch so if we set it to zero inches you can see the text is right up against that particular um, image if I move it down here a bit we can see that easier right uh, so it's a wrap text so zero margin means there's no margin and it's actually um, cutting out that text there if we move it to 1 16th so you can see that now that we get a little bit of a gap all right if we move it back to zero you can see there's absolutely no gap from the text to the image which doesn't look very good so 1 16th is a little bit better 1 8th was the default so that looks quite good but you can make it as big as you want so we can make it 3 8th of an inch so if you want lots of um, margin around the actual image itself so that's how you can change um, the margin settings for the image so we'll put it back to the default so if we go to custom uh, we can actually control how text wraps um, along all the sides so if I just move this kind of in the middle here it'll make it um, easier for us so you can see that for the top edge um, there's a gap between this text here and the image so if we make the top edge zero um, and we were to move this up you can see that there's no gap in between there anymore right uh, once we do that with the left edge if I make this zero you can see that now the left edge has no gap between the text and the image but the right still does okay so the right still has a 0 0.6 so we can make the the left edge a bit bigger um, let's go for 0 0.1 cool and you can see how what effect that has so you can control the margins around all of the sides of your actual picture so top left bottom and the right just depending on what you want to do if you go back and choose one of the preset options it just sets everything back to how it was so you can play around with that in your own time and kind of get used to how to format your particular image all right the last thing we want to do is to look at the other image options so if you click on um, image options go to size and rotation you can change the um, width and height of your value uh, of your image by just typing specific values in if you want them to be an exact um, size you can type the values in otherwise it's easiest just to click and drag the handles the other thing is to do um, rotation so you can rotate at a certain number of angles if we put it on 45 degrees you can see that you can get kind of interesting effects for your images if you want to do something like that or you can just click on um, 90 degrees from its current angle okay so we want to put the angle back to zero and then if you click 90 it rotates it around 90 degrees sweet so that's um, if you don't have a, an image which isn't exactly the right rotation you can just rotate it in your document as well that's not a problem cool and then we have the adjustments options here which just adjust the transparency of your image so you can see that by making it all the way up it makes it basically um, completely uh, transparent and if you put it all the way down it's completely opaque so that's really good if you put your image on top of some text and then we change it to be um, behind text then we can make the image opaque and you should see, be able to see the text appear a bit more right so you can see the text appears a bit more in that because the image is more transparent so that's quite a cool thing you can play around with is the transparency of your image uh, let's put that back to wrap text we'll move it back up to the top again sweet and then you can also change the contrast and brightness of your image so if you thought it was too bright or less bright you can make it darker or brighter depending on what you want it to do remember you can always use the undo command to undo what you did and get it back to how it was and you can also change the contrast setting to make it contrast a bit more depending on what you want so just click reset and it goes back to normal 
sweet so there we go so that's how what the transparency options do what the brightness and contrast does there's also a recolor option so you can add kind of color effects to your image which is kind of nice so if you want to make it stand out a little bit for some reason you could attempt to do those uh, so that's a negative image um, black and white's normally quite cool so that creates a black and white image um, so i think sometimes black and white images look really nice compared to color ones so that's called grayscale so those are quite cool things go no recolor and it puts it back to normal which is kind of cool and we've talked about all the other options and so that's it for this particular episode hopefully you've enjoyed it and if you liked it please give me a thumbs up if you didn't like it you can give me a thumbs down that's not a problem um, if you have any comments to make about the video then please leave them in the comment section i'll reply to all of them and if you like my tutorial videos please give me a, um, a subscription because you might find some of my later tutorial videos also useful for you as well Anyway, that's it for this video. Hopefully I will catch you in the next video.